signal flow graph. Signal flow graph is another technique that can be used to obtain the uh, performance of multiple networks connected to each other. Uh, in the previous video, we discussed the case where we have cascaded networks which can be solved by using the transmission matrix ABCD matrix. Uh, now, we are going to present another technique by using a signal flow graph which is based on the scattering parameters directly to study uh, the connected uh, networks. The primary components of signal flow graphs are the nodes and branches. Nodes represent each board. For nodes, each board of microwave network has two nodes, AI and BI. The node AI is defined with the wave entering the port I, which corresponds to the B incident, while node B is identified with a wave reflected from port I, which corresponds to V minus. The voltage at a node, at any node, is equal to the sum of all signals entering that node. For example, here we have an example of two board network. We have board one and board two. Assuming that the incident voltage is A1 at board one and the reflected voltage at board one is B1. So in this case, the board one can be represented by two nodes, A1 and B1. A1 corresponds to the wave entering to this board and B1 correspond to the wave going outside this board or leaving this board. Right? In a similar way, the board 2 is represented by two nodes. One node A2 which correspond to the wave entering board 2 and B2 which correspond to the wave going or leaving board 2. So, one primary component of the signal flow graph is the node. The other primary component is the branch. Branches, a branch is directed bus between two nodes, representing a signal flow from one node to another. For example, if I'm talking about board one, the signal is coming to board 1 is A1 and the signal reflected to board from board 1 is B1. So we have a branch from A1 to B1 which corresponds to S11. S11 is the amplitude of the reflected field from board 1 to the incident field at board 1. So this is a branch connecting the incident field to board 1 to the reflected field at board 1 which is S11. Another branch, if we have incident field at port 1, A1, we have leaving signal from port 2, B2. The ratio B2 to A1 correspond to S21. So the branch connecting B2 to A1 is S21. In a similar way, the branch connecting B2 to A2 is S22. The branch connecting A2 to B2 is S22. And the branch connecting B1 to A2 is S12. The branch connecting B1 to A2 is S12. So, a branch is a directed bus. Directed, it means that what is the direction? Here, A2 transmit its power to B1 through S12. is a directed bus between two nodes. These two nodes representing the signal flow from one node to another. Every branch has an associated 
is scattering parameters. So each branch has a corresponding S parameter or reflection coefficient. So the representation of the signal flow graph for a two-port network would look like this. Right? Wave amplitude A1 incident at port 1 wave amplitude A1 incident at port 1 is split with bar going to S11 and output port 1 as a reflected wave and another bar transmitted so S21 to node B2 and it's leaving from port 2. At node B, the waves goes outside port 2. At port B2, the waves goes outside port 2. If a load with a non-zero reflection coefficient is connected to port 2, if we have a Z load, where Z load has a reflection coefficient, this means that the output power going from board 2 will be partially reflected to be A2. This will be, will be at least partially reflected and re-enter board 2 through the node A2. The reflected field from board 2 which enters the board A2 will be split. Some part will go to B2 through S22 and some part will go, will go to B1 through S12. So part of this wave can be reflected back output board 2 via S22 and part can be transmitted out to board 1 through S12. The signal flow graph for a simple load is simply one board network. So one board network can be represented by two nodes. One node for entering the wave and one node for reflecting the wave. And the relation between the entered wave and the reflected wave is gamma A. So if we have a signal here, say SI entering the board A will be multiplied by gamma L and reflected back from the node B. If we have a source with internal impedance Z source connected to a load or a transmission line, then will be reflection coefficient gamma source at the input of the source. This gamma source equal Z node minus Z source over Z node plus Z source. So, this port can be represented by two nodes, A and B. B is going outside from the source, and A is a reflected. And the reflection coefficient, which is the signal is coming to the gamma source, is reflected by gamma source to B. Now, in addition to the reflected signal, we have the input signal from the V source itself. So the total signal coming to the port V or the node B is the reflected signal plus the input signal coming from the source. So this is the representation or the signal flow representation for a source with internal impedance Z source. Rules of signal flow graph. We have four main rules for signal flow graphs. The first rule is the series rule. The series rule states that if we have two branches whose common node has only one incoming and one outgoing wave, one we have a common node has one incoming and one outgoing wave 
which correspond to branches in series, may be combined to form a single branch whose coefficient is the product of the coefficients of the original branches. Assuming that we have branch from V1 to V2 correspond to S21, connected to in series, connected to another branch from V2 to V3, which has a coefficient S32, and the common node here has single input and a single output. In this case, we can replace these two branches by a single branch with S parameter equal S21 multiplied by S32. So V3 equal V32 multiplied by V2 and V2 is S21 V1 so V3 equal S32 multiplied by S21 multiplied by V1 or the equivalent S parameter for the two cascaded branch in this case is the multiplication of their S parameters S32 multiplied by S21 this is rule one, which is a series rule. The second rule is a barrel rule. The barrel rule states that if we have two branches from one common node to another common node, here, one common node, we have two branches to another common node, to another common node. So in this case, the node one has two outputs and the node 2 has two inputs and the two outputs from the node 1 goes to the two inputs of the node 2. Two branches from one common node to another common node, branches in parallel, may be combined in a single branch whose coefficient is the sum of the coefficients of the original nodes. So in this case, if we have through the first branch SA and the second branch is SB, so the total S parameter in this case is SA plus SB. This can be explained as V at node 2 equals SA multiplied by V1 plus SB multiplied by V1. So we can take V1 as a common factor, so it can be represented as SA plus SB V1. Or, in other words, we can replace these two branches by a single branch whose S parameter equals the summation of SA plus SB. Right? This is better rule. The third rule is the self-loop rule. The self-loop rule, if we have a closed loop along the bus. So in this case, the signal is coming from V1 to V2, and then the signal is coming from V2 to V2. Then the total signal V2 is going to V3 through S32. So the total signal at V2 is given by S21 V1 plus S22 V2, which is the self loop. Now we have V2 in this side and V2 in this side. We can move this term to the other term or to the other side. In this case, it would be V2 multiplied by 1 minus S22. So in this case, V2 over V1, it can be replaced by S21 over 1 plus, oh, sorry, 1 minus S22. It means that we can replace this branch combined with the self loop with another branch equals S21 over 1 minus S22. Now, by using the series rule or the first rule, we can say that the relation between V3 to V1 is the S parameter of the first branch multiplied by S parameter of the second branch 
would be S3 2 multiplied by S2 1 over 1 minus S2 2 V1. So the self loop rule states that when a node has a self loop, here this node has a self loop, which is a branch that begins and the end at the same node. We start from node V2 and end at V2. Of coefficient S, the self loop can be eliminated by multiplying the coefficients of the branches feeding that node by 1 over 1 minus S. Once again, the self loop can be eliminated. We can eliminate this self loop by multiplying the coefficient of the branch feeding. This the branch is feeding. So we are going to multiply the S parameter of the branch feeding this node by 1 over 1 minus S, where S is the S parameter of the self loop. So what we have done here, the branch feeding this node is S21. We multiplied it by 1 over 1 minus S22, which is the self loop here. This rule 3, which is the self loop rule. The final rule of the rules of the signal flow graph is the splitting rule. Here we have signal coming from V1 to V2 and we have two branches from V2. One branch is going to V4 and another branch is going to V3. And we are interested in the signal at V4. In this case, we have the signal is going from V1 to V2 through S21 and then is going to V4 through uh, S42. We can replace this network by a branch starting from V1 such that in this case we have S21 to V2 dash and from V2 dash we go directly to V4 through S42. So, rule 4, splitting rule, a node may be split into two separate nodes as long as the resulting flow graph contains once and only once each combination of separate without any self loops. There is no self loops in this case. Input and output branch that connect to the original node. Alright? So in this case, we have split it. V2 into two nodes. Okay? A node may be split into separate nodes as long as the resulting flow graph contains once and only once each combination of separate loop. So we have this loop and we have this loop without making a self loop and the output branches that connect to the original ones. So that's what we are saying splitting the node V2 dash. We have split it V node 2 dash by obtaining the same S21 here and split this one. Alright? These are the rules of the signal flow graph. Uh, in the next video, we are going to present an example for using a signal flow graph. And after this, we are going to represent how to make calibration for the victim analyzer by using a signal flow graph. Alright?